So today we're going to talk about marginal frequencies. So first we're going to start off talking about two-way tables. A two-way table is a frequency table, which just shows how many times something occurs, that displays data collected from one source that actually belongs to two categories. And it's just a nice way to display the information. So there's a little bit of vocabulary. We have joint frequency, and that's each entry in the table. So each of these numbers is a joint frequency because it's talking about two types of things at the same time. So in this case, it's saying this person's a junior, and they said yes to majoring in the medical field. And then um, this piece of information actually has two categories also. So women said no, but they're also a senior at the same time. Okay, and then there's something called marginal frequencies, which is what we're going to calculate in just a second. And that's actually the sums of the rows and the columns. So it's very easy to figure these out. You just have to do them really quick. Let's see. And I forgot to mention, if we're talking about categories, these are the categories that the answers fall in. Okay, so we're going to find the marginal frequencies for the two-way table. I just recopied it one more time down here. And you basically just add the numbers. So 124 plus 101 is 225. And then 219 plus 236 is 455. And then add the rows as well. So 124 plus 219 is 343. You can definitely grab a calculator to do this. 101 plus 236 is 337. And sometimes it'll be blocked out a little more, like maybe there's these little borders like this. You don't really have to draw all of those. It's called the marginal frequency because it's sort of like written in the margin of the of the chart. And sometimes you'll see a total here. And you'll see a total here. Depends on how it's set up. Oh, and then you might say, well, what about this last corner? So this last corner is actually the total of the rows and the columns. So if you were to add up 343 plus 337, you get 680. And then if you add these two numbers also, you also get 680. It's kind of a nice way to check your work, actually, where they add up to the same thing. And so this is the total just for the juniors, total number of juniors, and then this would be the total seniors right here. And then this one in the corner is the total of all, total number of students surveyed. It goes along with the same thing. So looking down the columns, this would be the total of people majoring in a medical field. And this one would be the total of people not majoring in a medical field. And that's how we interpret the marginal frequencies. Just think about, so you'd say 225 people are majoring in the medical field. And that would be how you interpret that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to actually make this. So let's say you conduct a survey that asks 286 students in a freshman class whether they play a sport or a musical instrument. And we've got some other numbers here. Let's just go ahead and start setting up the table. Because you want to start with the two categories. And so the things that we're finding out is whether they play an instrument and whether, let me zoom out a bit so you can see both, and whether they play a sport. And sometimes those things can overlap, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that you do one or the other. Okay, so their answers are either going to be yes or no. So we'll put yes or no to playing an instrument, and it's yes or no to playing a sport. And now we can start filling in those numbers. So you conduct a survey that asks 286 students in the freshman class. Oh, and actually, it's only the freshman class. That's right. I was thinking for a second that we had two different ages. Okay, but we're just talking about sports or musical instruments. So if it's 286 students, total, total, and we don't have any other categories, then that actually goes over here in the corner because that's the total of the whole thing. And then if it helps to think about it. You can kind of put an extra little line here. Sort of closes off the table and the ones outside those lines or the marginal frequencies. Those are in the margins. Okay, now we've got 
118 of the students play a sport. Okay, so if 118 students total play a sport, whether they play a musical instrument or not, that goes over there. And we can also fill in total here and total there. Okay, and then 64 of those students play an instrument. So they're the ones that said yes to both of those. And then 93 of the students do not play a sport or an instrument, which would be no and no, which is over here. You might say, well, they didn't give us enough information to finish this. But you can actually figure out the rest with that much information. I would start off with subtracting 286 and 118, because then you find out the other number that goes right there. And then anywhere that you only have one blank, so right here, we can subtract 118 and 64 to get 54. You can see that that's sort of like a chain reaction. So the ones that were too blank to figure out earlier, now we can figure that out. So 54 plus 93 is 147. And, if, and you might say, wait, we're kind of stuck here. But remember, we've got different directions that we can work from. And so now we can subtract 168 minus 193 to get 75. And now we can add these two. And you could have done this in some slightly different orders. As long as you get the right answer, then you're good. Okay, and so you can interpret this the same way. So for instance, you can say there's 147 students who don't play an instrument. And some of them might also play sport, right? And so there's just different ways. Looking at each number, it tells you certain information about those students. Alright, that's it for today. Talk to you later.